Hey. Hey. Today I'm going to show you some of the properties of sulfur. And it's a nice yellow powder, as you can see right in here. Mm, yellow. Yeah, we got a bottle of lab grade sulfur. And it is a group 5A element. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you plastic sulfur, which is really interesting because it's really different from the crystal form. Sulfur normally comes in rings of eight atoms shaped kind of like a crown. You can see it here. And that is its crystal form. And almost normally, it, almost always, it is normally in that form at room temperature. And it makes crystals there. And you can see that that's what this is in here. It's crystal sulfur in its powdered form. So each little speck of powder, which is too small to see, is actually a crystal from that form. So in order to change the form of the sulfur, it'll still be pure sulfur, but it'll be a different form of it. And I'm going to add a little more sulfur in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to melt the sulfur slowly and carefully because it's flammable, so kind of hard to do when you don't have a controlled temperature. It's hard to get a controlled temperature when you don't have much science equipment. But I slowly heat it up to get it to start to melt. And what this is going to do is it's going to start to break down the sulfur crystals. Um, the rings of sulfur in here, the heat gives them the energy to break apart into chains of sulfur. You can see it's starting to smoke. Yeah, we'll turn on the fan here because it smells pretty nasty. But as these rings break down, it'll form chains of sulfur. And these chains make the liquid. And it's pretty viscous because it gets tangled up. The chains get tangled together and it forms a very thick liquid. And ugh, it does not smell good. <laughs> And the most important thing to do here is to try and prevent it from catching on fire. And that's why it's very hard to do over the stove, because it's hard to keep it from doing that. And right now we're just melting the sulfur. If you look closely, you can see a little liquid on the outside there. It's an orangish liquid mm -hmm. that's forming. And it's the smell right now is a mix between rotten eggs and fireworks from the 4th of July, because the black powder in those actually... As you can see, it started out really not very viscous, kind of like water almost, but it's getting more thick now, kind of like honey or syrup, and about the same color, just nowhere near the same smell. Not something you would want to put on waffles. Whoops. There we go. As the chains continue breaking down, or the rings, sorry, they're forming these chains, and they're getting tangled together, and it's just getting thicker and thicker and thicker. And it's a really thick liquid now, because the chains are getting tangled together. Maybe that's just for longer years. Okay, we're just about all melted.
Okay. So here I got our molten sulfur, totally molten at this point. And when cooled rapidly, it doesn't have time to crystallize, and it makes amorphous sulfur, more commonly known as plastic sulfur. It doesn't get its crystal structure made of rings back. Instead, it gets its tangled up chain structure. Looks like chocolate. Yeah, it didn't bubble. Okay, I did it right. Hold it for a second. Yes, it worked. That is plastic sulfur. Right now it's brown because the impurities. I kept it. I had to keep it molten for 30 minutes while the camera was charging. So that's all sulfur dioxide that got dissolved in there, making it this nice brown color but for the most part it's still sulfur and same chemical we had before which is pretty unbelievable Let's get it all together here this stuff is really liquidy all these chains are tangled together does it stick to your fingers yes it does it's very sticky and bad smelling not how do you get it off your fingers i'll figure that out after the camera's off well, we're almost out of tape. Oh, no. Not tape or charge? Tape. Okay. Don't spill it. I'm not. It's just like... It's a smells awful and no child would touch it. <laughs> and it's actually hardening in my hands right now. I could feel it reverting back to its crystal form. It wants to be crystallized again. That's what it wants to do at room temperature. It's getting really tough right now. It's happening rapidly. And I can feel it going back to its crystal form in my hands. It's becoming rock solid. And what I've demonstrated here, I'll continue to demonstrate in a second. These two types of sulfur over here are crystal sulfur. That you can see is one big sulfur crystal, the normal type. That is crystal sulfur. This stuff, plastic sulfur. And as it cools down, what's going to happen? These chains, they're going to link back up into rings. And those rings are going to come together to form crystals again. And you can actually see that's already happening quite a bit in this guy. You can see little crystals on the surface. So it's going back to this form, right over here. Yep. Okay. And that is how to make plastic sulfur.